Hello, my name is James and I'm the Mayor of Jamestown. With the start of a new week, we've got a brand new game to enjoy for the low, low price of completely free, with this week's game being Star Wars Battlefront 2 Celebration Edition. Available from the 14th of January 2021 to the 21st of January 2021, be sure to pick up this online shooter while it's available completely for free. Developed by DICE and produced by EA, Star Wars Battlefront 2 was released originally on the 17th of November 2017. The sequel is designed to improve on everything people found lacking about the first one, and it's pretty safe to assume they managed just that. Following on from the reboot of the Battlefront series, DICE have a lot to live up to, and considering the initial release for this game was surrounded in controversies, it's good to see where the game has ended up now. Unlike the first one, the game is thankfully equipped with a campaign mode and story for players to enjoy for when they want a break from the madness that is online multiplayer. I'll talk more about the story later on and in more depth, but the gist of the campaign is that the story is relatively decent, a little on the short side, but it scratches that itch of wanting to play Battlefront without the need to be online if you're trying to learn the game, to some degree anyway. In terms of what you'll actually be doing in gameplay, this is your pretty standard FPS title from the people over at DICE, the team behind the Battlefield series and lover of the word battle, apparently. Knowing that they're behind the Battlefield games, you can imagine that gameplay is going to be more objective focused than other FPS games, while giving the player access to a wide variety of weapons and vehicles to enjoy. What sets the game apart from others is through the use of heroes and villains that litter the Star Wars universe, such as Darth Vader, Yoda, Luke Skywalker, and the lovable rogue that is Han Solo. During a game, players can earn points to spend on one of these characters, allowing them to be used until they die. These characters are all strong, unique, and have a handful of different abilities that other typical characters wouldn't have access to. This is easily one of the highlights in the game, due to just how much it can separate the monotony of only fighting against simple ground troopers. Although, it is relatively terrifying to see Darth Vader slowly walk towards you, just about ready to slice you in twain with a single slash of his lightsaber. Yet, it's rather exhilarating when you get to do the same to your enemies. To provide a bit of uniqueness with every fight is the inclusion of a card system. By acquiring these cards, you can equip them onto your different loadouts, giving you both active and passive changes to the character. By messing around with these cards, it can change the way you play and ensure that your build is the best of the best on the battlefield, or should I say battlefront. Honestly, from an early game standpoint, they're probably not nearly as important to the average player, at least not until you start taking the online a bit more seriously. From a casual perspective, they're fun to mess around with, but I wouldn't be surprised at higher levels of play having a bad setup could cost you the match. Visually speaking, as should be no surprise from a AAA Star Wars title, the graphics and visuals for the game are really well done, even if the game is starting to close in on 4 years old at this point. Considering that the developers had all of the Star Wars franchise to pick and choose environments from, they did a really good job at bringing them to fruition. I will say that most of the environments are inspired from the mainline films, rather than the extended universe, which isn't necessarily a detriment. It does mean though that if you are looking for something a little more on the unique and never seen before side of things, you aren't necessarily going to get it with this one. However, that's to be expected, but maybe one day we'll get a new Battlefront title that's less from the movies and more the extended universe. Personally, I think that'd be a nice change. Just a small warning, I'm going to be talking about one of the twists in the main story campaign, so skip to the on-screen time prompt to skip past the story section, if you so desire. In terms of the story, it currently has me in two minds, and for one reason and one reason only. It doesn't stick to its guns. Allow me to explain. In this story, you play as a female officer known as Aiden Versio, a commander for the Empire and essentially the lead of her very own group of elite soldiers called Inferno Squad. Throughout the beginning of the story, you play as Aiden, doing the Empire's bidding to ensure that the Rebel Alliance is quelled. All of this is really interesting due to the fact that we never really get to see the story on the darker side of things, with the exception of the Forced Unleashed series. Where the story then drops the ball, however, is by giving this up and turning her into a rebel. For spoiler reasons, I won't get into how this happens, but all of a sudden, the most interesting part about this character is suddenly dropped because the developers want you to play as the good guys. In my opinion, I'm sick of being the good guys in Star Wars games. I remember when the campaign for this game was originally teased, and it heavily relied on the fact that you get to be an Empire Commander, and yet somehow she still ends up working for the Rebels? I wouldn't say that this tanks the story, but the fact that it's already pretty short, only to have the most interesting aspect of the plot ripped out early on, made the campaign story not nearly as interesting as I feel it could have been. Moving on to the audio, and honestly, when it comes to the audio, do I even really need to say anything at all? I mean, it's the Star Wars IP. They've got the classic Star Wars theme everyone and their mum has grown up knowing. Both blasters and lightsabers sound exactly like their film counterparts and help you to immerse into the Star Wars universe itself. 
other than it being really well done, there isn't really much to say. It's Star Wars after all. The audio work is going to be pretty damn well done regardless. In conclusion, there really is a lot to get out of the multiplayer with this one. Admittedly, the main campaign isn't the best we've ever seen from an FPS title, but the majority of people playing this one aren't going to be here for the campaign, which makes a lot of sense. To be fair, it was just nice that they added it at all compared to the last game. I will say, in all honesty, I'm not the biggest fan of multiplayer in games, especially in shooters. They rarely keep my interest for long periods of time unless I'm playing with someone I know. So truthfully, Star Wars Battlefront's 2 main catch of almost limitless online play doesn't really do it for me, but I can see why people find the game so enjoyable. As a result of all of this, I'm going to have to give the game a traffic light score of green. For those that are looking for a fun, FPS title to sink your teeth into, you could do a lot worse than Star Wars Battlefront 2. It's got a lot to offer and has moved on from the massive controversy that plagued the game during its initial release, and as a result, has become quite the success story. Thanks to those of you that stuck around until the end, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all of that good stuff. As of next week, we should be getting a free copy of Galactic Civilizations free, so be sure to look for that game next week and my subsequent review on it as well. Until then though, I've been James, the Mayor of Jamestown, and I'm off. Goodbye.